Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. We'll just give a few seconds for others to join us. And, uh, make a start. Tim, what should we talk about while we wait? What's the weather like in where the weather? You know, yeah, it's grey. That's the best thing. It's yeah. grey and wintry, UK standard, obviously. It's probably more interesting if Nikos talks about the weather in Athens. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's mixed feelings. One day is closer to, to London. The next day, you know, it's more, it's warmer. Depends, depends. Bermuda had swings. A, an unusual uh, experience in Athens where it was this, this sort of time of year, maybe a bit later, and uh, it was too warm. It was like 20 degrees and everybody was saying, no, we can't put our Christmas decorations up. And it was just a... <laughs> It's too early for Christmas. It, yeah, exactly. it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> we, can, we can't start Christmas. It's too hot. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's make a start. We've seen quite a few people joining us now. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, welcome to um, our webinar um, talking about strengthening um, collections in the cost of living crisis. And we've got two colleagues with us here from Corker who are going to tell us some tactics that uh, they've been helping clients with to address these problems. So uh, my name is Freud Mier and I'm, I'm Head of Advisory at Aram. Um, and Tim, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi all, uh, thank you very much for um, attending today. My name is Tim Graham. Uh, I'm a Senior Solution Design Consultant working with uh, Qualco Technology. Um, my role is, is uh, spreads across the sales cycles and the early stages of delivery. But uh, as a just to wrap it, um, my role is to provide appropriate solutions to our clients. Uh, I've been working with software solutions for more than 20 years. I know that's probably something you can't believe, but just to um, hit that home, I'm 53 tomorrow. Um, I've been working with debt collection solutions for the past 15 years, uh, and I've been working with Qualco for the past four. Uh, Ovid. Um, and just sorry, just to introduce Qualco as, as uh, and give you a bit of background as to who we are. Um, we've been providing uh, software solutions for 25 years. Uh, we have 90 clients across 35 countries. Uh, Qualco's analytics driven fintech solutions span across the uh, credit life cycle um, through loan originations, loan management, debt collections and recoveries, panel management, analytics, decisioning, uh digital engagement uh and uh, supply chain finance thanks tim nikos up to you hi hi everyone thank you for joining uh i'm nick Anilopoulos. my background revolves mostly around banking and fintech i joined qualco back in 2020 as a business analyst working with uh, our flagship product uh, qualco collections and recoveries and one and a half years back i transitioned to solution design where I'm responsible for all AI, digital and analytics initiatives of the department, uh, trying to bring them to life by bundling them into solutions that drive operational efficiency for our clients. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Nikos. Uh, and the reason we're having this conversation today is because Qualco are one of our Aram approved system vendors. Um, for those of you who are not aware, um, Aram is a scheme where we evaluate various collection systems across the market um, and give feedback to vendors, but also if they pass our, our criteria, which is at last count has more than 180 different data points, then they get our coveted Aram approved badge. So um, wear it with pride. There you go, guys. Right. Um, OK, um, we really I'll be talking to the guys today about some of the um, ways in which they're helping their their clients deal with tackle with the cost of living crisis but we're really interested in hearing your views as well so please use the q a um tab which you see on the top of your screen to ask any questions that you'd like me to put to um tim and to nikos um we'll also be running some polls during the session so please do respond to those as well we are really interested in in what you think and um and, uh, about what the guys are saying and things that are of interest to you that you, you want them to talk about as well okay right tim let me start with you so um i think as well as individuals we've all dealt with sort of or face different challenges in in regarding to cost of living over the past few years certainly since the pandemic from your client's point of view how are you supporting your clients to deal with some of those challenges so we've got um, a number of focuses that we've uh, started initiatives around internally within Qualco to try and deliver to our clients needs and also their customers um, so we've got sort of three focus statements that we'll look at today uh, the first is um, how can we uh, put our solutions in the hands of our clients as cheaply and as quickly as possible. 
Uh, how can our solutions drive operational efficiency into our clients? And how can uh, end customers engage with our clients in the in the most efficient way um, uh, through through our solutions? Uh, so the reasons we're focused on those is if we take the the borrower as an example, um, they're going to be experiencing diminished uh, disposable income. Uh, their their household bills are rising, um, which might be driving a, a, a more of a uh, an increase in borrowing from their perspective, which then has a knock on effect to uh, increase risk of debt accruing. From the lender's perspective. Uh, we can, uh, we, we, you know, we're all experienced this. Uh, operational costs are arising, just like our household bills. Um, that's driving a, a reduced uh, ability to invest in technology. So that's then having a knock on effect uh, whereby they're probably in a bit of a quandary uh, where they probably need to invest in some technology to handle things like the, the rise in financially vulnerable borrowers. Um, so th th there's a bit of a, a mix there as to, to what's happening. Um, so where that takes us is, I'm just going to share a slide very quickly just to bring this to life. Can everybody see that? Yeah. OK, so just to introduce the solutions that we'll look at today uh, and to validate uh, where we're going with the discussions, um, I'd like to introduce um, uh, our agentless collections uh, capabilities, which is, utilizes uh, AI uh, to reduce call center pressures uh, and ease sensitive discussions with customers. Uh, the second item on the list is uh, the accelerator, which is an approach to stand up our flagship debt collection solution, QCR, Qualco Collections and Recoveries, as quickly as possible and at the lowest cost uh, we can achieve. And then we've got Cube, which is um, a decisioning platform, uh, which is driven by uh, machine learning um, and advanced analytics to drive in predictive uh, decisioning into your collections function. OK, great. Look forward to talking about those. I can certainly sort of relate to what you were saying around, you know, the challenges that borrowers are facing. I, I was involved in some conferences earlier in the last few weeks where and lots of new research coming out that um, certainly here in the UK, and I know we've got some colleagues from across Europe here, um, that, that debts are not only increasing or debtors are increasing, but actually the volume of debt of those debtors are also increasing as well. So um, certainly for some some borrowers, they are they are certainly finding it more difficult now. Um, and that clearly creates some challenges for, for lenders. Um, right. I'm going to launch a poll at the minute um, just so to get some um, views from colleagues. While we do that, Nikos, handing over to you, tell us a bit more about agents collections. What is it and how yes. does it work? Um, so as we have already started facing the compounding effects of uh, the major macroeconomic factors that Tim also introduced, we've noticed a real shift in how we need to handle customer collections from an engagement and interaction point of view. So uh, to introduce you to our take on, on, uh, on uh, this uh, challenge and how, how we think of it, um, can you see my screen? Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. perfect. So what we did is we tried to develop a solution that not only tackles current collections challenges heads on, but is also incredibly easy to implement and offers the quickest operational costs reduction from day one. Now the whole concept and the core innovation lies in end-to-end -end automation of customer interactions, managing both campaign-driven responses, but also spontaneous customer inquiries, which in my opinion is a crucial capability given the rising volume of financial hardship cases. Now. Um, we put customers in the driver's seat by uh, offering them the autonomy they need, which means that they can manage the, their debt repayment at their own convenience with flexible options that match both their circumstances and, and profiles. And what really makes this work, in our opinion, is the focus on engagement. Based on our expertise, we found out that when you personalize the experience, customers are much more likely to engage and pay and also, a personalized engagement is strongly correlated with our customers' willingness to pay, which is a key driver of collection rates. And lastly, we also want a solution that's seamlessly integratable with the existing tech ecosystems of our clients while bringing the most added value for them. So that's agentless in, in a nutshell. Yeah, 
that's good. I mean, certainly when we talk to our clients, I think automation is, is something that's really important to them and something that they're yes. interested in. If I was one of your clients, what kind of benefits would I see if, if you know, I was using your agent list collections solutions? Yes, I think that that's the most important question. And let me walk you through uh, the key benefits that uh, really make uh, the solution stand out. So first off, we have uh, AI doing the heavy lifting of on routing tasks. This means that agents, human agents can really focus on what they do best, uh, which is handling complex situations that really need that human touch. Um, speaking of handling volume, uh, we've built this for scale, so it can handle very high volumes of interactions and can be scaled based on demand. Now, where it gets interesting is that um, our AI solution keeps learning and evolving, which means that it can adapt to how uh, our customers interact, getting smarter with every conversation. And this intelligence allows us to move away from a one-size-fits-all, uh, creating a, a personalized recovery journey tailored to each customer's specific situation. Uh, its implementation is, uh, of course, streamlined and efficient. Uh, the solution can plug right into what uh, our clients already have, and uh, we can notice the difference right away. And by difference, uh, looking at tangible results, um, we'll notice cost savings from day one, minimal setup costs, uh, but also, and most importantly, uh, no long waiting periods to see that uh, return on investment. Now, building on this technology, the book the backbone of the solution is natural language understanding, which allows the solution to understand payment behavior. So it can assess in real time who's likely to pay and when, or in other words, our customers' propensity to pay. And this helps our clients make smarter decisions about collection strategies. Lastly, and to kind of tie it all together, and in my opinion, this is a big one, we're giving customers control. So they can manage their, their accounts 24-7, get instant answers to their questions from their preferred communication channel without waiting around, uh, because at the end of the day, happy customers are more likely to pay, right? Yeah, yeah. Nikos, in terms of, of um, the using the solution, um, is, this, is this targeted to a certain type of your, your clients or can all your clients use this? Um, so it's, it, it, it can be uh, tailored uh, to any, any needs but um, it, it can address any um, inbound customer interactions. So uh, it can easily automate uh, the lump sum of interactions um, while uh, allowing us to focus uh, on more complex cases and uh, you know, reduce our operational costs as well. Okay, great, thank you for that. Um, just to... Uh, uh out to the audience please if you do have any questions use the q a uh, buttons to um, submit your questions um tim let's talk a bit about a uh, bit about um sort of your accelerator solution now let me see if i can get the technology working i'm gonna sh i've got a video to share which uh, i think our audience might be uh interested in and uh, let me see if that works Right. Now, if I wasn't on the call, I'd be up dancing to that because I think it's <laughs> dance music, right? But anyway, there you go. Dad's dad, that'd be dad dancing. It wouldn't be, you know, anything worth writing about, certainly. Um, that was a nice video. Tim, tell us a bit more about Accelerator. What, what is it? So the Accelerator is really Qualco finding the ability to stand up the flagship uh, collections and recovery platform, Qualco collections and recovery, as quickly as possible, but with this low cost to the client uh, as we can make it. Um, I think the key point is we're not compromising on the standard capabilities of the solution. Uh, they're all available. This is more the process of delivering uh, and how we can stand it up as quickly as possible. Um, what we've also done is used our 
uh, extensive expertise uh, and experience in the debt collection space to configure capabilities and predefine what we can without over engineering. Um, so the sorts of things we put in the box are uh, we, we've actually targeted an audience with this first QCR accelerator, which is uh, for unsecured consumer lenders. So focusing on uh, personal loans, credit cards, overdraft accounts. Um, we, we've tailored the solution uh, to early arrears, so not to 90 days past due. Um, we've we've uh, pre-configured the, the the segmentation model, um, so that automates how your portfolio is is segmented to the right place within the solution, and then is pushed towards a, a treat a relevant treatment uh, within the solution, which again we've predefined at least the stubs that are in place. Um, and also we're utilizing our suite of standard integration mechanisms uh, to be able to have your your collection system talking to its complementary systems that sit on your landscape. OK, great. So if I understand that correctly, it's about sort of implementing the your, your full QCR solution, but in a much more accelerated way, hence the, the term accelerator. Yes, yes. Standing it up as quickly as possible, getting it into the okay. client's hands and allowing them to see the full benefits of QCR. Uh, yeah. in, in and again, is, is that sort of aimed at certain types of clients or can all clients use that? Uh, so uh, the system is still fully extendable. Um, so we've we've had to define uh, a target audience. So we've said it's uh, unsecured uh, consumer lenders, uh, but to extend beyond that into secured debt or, um, you know, uh, SME type debt, is is just within the parameterization suite. So there's there's, there's no lockdown. Uh, I've I've worked with solutions that that have tried to achieve quick delivery, um, and and what's happened is they've they've locked down the capabilities or they've customized something. Uh, the the migration path has then been diminished. Um, this isn't that. This is the full QCR suite available to our clients, but in a in a packaged way that we can stand up very quickly. Okay. I've just launched another poll just to ask our audience what they think how important the speed of implementation is. Certainly when we're speaking to clients, it's it's something that comes up quite quite often. Um so in terms of that speed, so what difference does that make then? I mean it, me being able to implement something quickly as opposed to a bit longer, what, what kind of difference does that make and how does that help people deal with this sort of challenge of reducing cost during this cost of living crisis? Well, let me um share uh we can just walk walk through a journey. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's just walk through the concept in a bit more depth. So what we're proposing with this solution is to uh, deliver the accelerator in a total of 17 weeks, a go live point at 13 weeks. Um, what we've got on the on the uh, the screen is uh, really a comparison between uh, our traditional QCR delivery. Um, which we um, often see falls between six and seven months to deliver. Uh, and then return on investment is somewhere well beyond that. What we believe the accelerator is going to do is uh, provide you with a, uh, a stood up solution uh, within um, slightly uh, above three months. Um, but because it's cheaper and you're seeing the full benefits, automation and those sorts of things, uh, you're then able to see the return on investment investment very quickly, and we we predict that it's around the eight month mark. The 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 way we're achieving this is really um, the solution requires some flexibility from the clients in terms of we expect some adoption rather than adapting the solution to specific processes or or how you work now. Uh, the predefined capabilities are obviously best practice, so that's what drives that uh, that that you know that message. Um, there's an increased focus on the client owning the solution and being becoming self-sufficient. So we've developed a full program of education to be able to put the power in the client's hands. Whereas today they might be reliant on their software vendor or an IT department. That's not what this solution needs. It, it needs. It's got a studio that hangs off it, so the intent is for the client to own this. So we will focus on playing back the solution um, and and educating on what's in the box, uh, and then that reduces effort on analysis and documentation, which, which you would see in the traditional 
approach of uh, implementing QCR. And obviously that's driving into a guaranteed level of bottom line benefits. Um, so I think the main points here are quick return on investment, short delivery, um, full capabilities uh, within the solution. Okay, great. So first of all, what we're saying is that a typical QCR implementation might take sort of um, four to five months, right? Or perhaps even longer? Um, uh, so, seven well, to six, six to seven months, four to six five to months, months before you start to recognise the return on investment. Yeah. And with Accelerator, is that, that timeline is, is shortening so that you're implementing it perhaps within three months or 17 yep. weeks there. Correct. So basically you start seeing those benefits sooner rather than Correct. later, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Right. And in terms of the points you were saying around sort of handing more ownership over to, to clients, yeah. Um, what does that mean for them in practice? What what kind of things would they be doing differently or um, the same perhaps if with Accelerator that might be or not be doing with a, a full implementation? So I, I think what we, we recognise with our clients, often with clients that we work with, is that um, they're, they're heavily reliant on IT making changes to the solution, um, whereas they want control over the collection system. Uh, or QCR as a, as a standard approach uh, allows that. So we've, we've taken that approach, um, built out some models within the solution, and we want to educate the client then uh, around what is in the box. Um, but also that allows them to understand. So again, another observation for myself in terms of implementing collection software is it might be a very legacy system that they're coming from. So they're locked into practices that have been bent and molded around a very old solution. So this also allows the client to understand how the QCR product works and it enables them to make informed decisions on how they want to grow the solution uh, going forwards. Well, judging by our poll results, certainly our audience agree with you, but certainly everyone who's responded so far agrees that speed of implementation is really important. So I think you know right. this really does this sort of play to 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 those views um of our audience Perfect. okay great Perfect. okay fine Thank um in, in terms of um the accelerator itself um thinking about sort of different functionality that that as a collector i might typically want so things like strategies i always find is, is really important yeah um what kind of um as i understand it from what you said earlier you know some of, some of these things can pre-configured yeah what level of conf sort of configurability, if I can get my teeth straight, do I have once, so for example, after that six, seven month period, if I need to change the accelerator, can I do that or is that the same? So uh, yeah, just, just to be clear, as part of the accelerator model, the strategies we would expect to work with the client as a specific area to, to define with them. Um, so that's, that's um, there's stubs and examples of strategies in there with some key rules that we've defined and end up defining for most of our clients as we implement the solution. So uh, there is an area there that we can work with the client, but the studio that comes with QCR allows the system to be fully configurable from adding fields to the UI or, you know, moving moving fields around on the UI through to um, setting up strategies and segmentation activities that the agent might need to perform within the solution can all be um, configured, set up, parameterized. Um, that's the full intent is, is that it's a, a moldable solution that, that we put in the hands of our clients. Right. So just to make sure I understand this, because I, I see lots of vendors who talk to me about sort of a light version of their product. So what we're, what we're saying here is this, this is not light, this is just no. a thinner no. version to, to allow for a, speed or implementation but exactly. actually the full power of the platform is still there right 100 percent, yes yes and i'm i've seen exactly the same where it's a stripped down version hard coded um to to prevent extensions and so on that that isn't what we've got here we've got full qcr capabilities full extendability uh within the solution we're just trying to stand it up uh very early so the client can actually get their hands on it load accounts into it, start to use it, and then make decisions on how they can extend it further. Okay, great. So let's talk, move on to talking about Cube. And uh, I, again, I've got another video to share with you. Um, so let me just get that rolling and then we can
talk about it. Great. So, Tim, tell us a bit more about Cube. Okay, I'm just going to share quickly, bear with me, just to uh, give everybody a visual to, to focus on. Okay, so what's Cube? Cube, um, again, we haven't reinvented the wheel here. Uh, we have a platform for decisioning uh, and analytics called Qualco Data Driven Decisioning or, or uh, D3E. Uh, what we've been able to do is put a focus with this. Uh, around the debt collection space. Um, anybody who's familiar with decisioning platforms knows that uh, decisioning can happen across uh, a client's organization. It doesn't have to be just focused to debt collections, but Cube focuses on debt collections uh, and the optimization of those processes. Um, so the graphic that I put up on the screen just shows that it's driven through uh, historic data, either internal from your collection system, uh, or external through uh, credit history, those sorts of things, which can enrich the decisioning process. Uh, they're driven into uh, a data warehouse, which is part of the D3 solution. And then what's happened is we've built out standard models within the cube piece, which focus on early warning. Uh, so we can see um, how uh, clients are behaving or whether their behaviors are changing. Um, and equally, we can drive in optimization uh, within those models to um, identify the next best treatment based on something that's happened with that, that case or that customer, um, and also the next action. So uh, a, a poignant piece here would be we could drive certain uh, uh, demographic of, uh, of customers through to the agentless part of the solution to enable them. It might be more appropriate rather than send letters or emails or SMSs, that they'll probably respond better to um, an agentless interaction. Um, so that, that's really where we're going with the Cube solution. Um, so the, the models that, that uh, we've really built out, so we talked about um, what we would class as hyper-personalized treatments, um, which, which are really based on know your customer um, type, type elements. So that's, um, you know what what's the next best treatment how do we want to you know knowing what demographic of customer uh, that they fall into um we can send them to an appropriate treatment and action um uh, based on who they are and, and, and how we've interacted with them previously and that's all based on the outcomes of history that uh, that we've gathered uh, on similar demographics and so on uh, the early warning piece, so we've also built out models and strategies around the early warning piece. So this is more around um, propensity to self-cure. Uh, so what, what we're looking at here is, do we want to leave these people alone? So we know they're a late payer, okay? So they late, they, they pay late every month. Um, do, do we care? Uh, the ones that we may care about is those that are showing propensity to, to break. So they might have set up a, an arrangement, a payment plan, um, to uh, clear a debt, um, but they they're starting to pay late. We're seeing behaviours that is showing that they're they're either close to missing payments or you know and breaking that arrangement. So we might it allows us to be more reactive and proactive with our customers uh, and engage with them quicker before something really bad happens or they accrue significant amounts of debt. So that's really what uh, Cube is doing within the debt collection space is driving operational efficiencies. Uh, and uh, early warnings to allow us to, um, you know, uh, uh, be be more streamlined within the debt collections uh, function. So, so while I was dancing to the video, the 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 number I spotted in there was seventy five percent increase in digital engagement. 
which which to me is is very powerful right H how did you achieve it or how does the solution achieve that well, it's, it's not really a stat that's ours we've got a partner that we work with webio who have passed us that stat and and really that's from those clients uh, sorry from those cases customers that afforded to the digital uh, arena um we are seeing high volumes of of uh, uh positive response from them in terms of either um setting up a promise to pay some positive action is coming out of those engagements um and 75 percent, and i believe it's higher now um uh, from from what i understand um so that's that's quite a lean uh, estimation but it's a high response positive outcome to those digital engagements um is what we're hearing okay great okay so um we've spent the last sort of 29 minutes sort of talking about the solutions um what i'd like to do now is actually actually put you on the spot and say look what difference does this really make right because certainly when, when i talk to vendors a lot of vendors say similar things so i'd, I'd be really interested to to find out what difference this makes and i'd be interested in our um audience as well sharing some tough questions so that i can i can ask you the, them on their behalf right so please do use the q a button to to put those questions to tim and, and nikos so guys hundred you know sixty four thousand dollar question right what i mean just let's say i'm interested in all that stuff what difference is it going to make to me can i um jump in here and just uh um, yeah sure go for um, it so i I'd like to uh, just share a bit of a journey um, to uh, articulate how we expect. So um, we, we've talked about these three solutions, but, but there's potential that they, they can work hand in hand if you take all three. So just to take you through this journey and then um, there's some stats at the end that, that we can look at. Uh, so the journey here is starting with the accelerator. So the QCR product, um, we are driving the history that we've gathered across cases and customers into Cube. Um, Cube is churning that information uh, and then establishing a best treatment, a best action, maybe some early warnings and driving those back into the collections uh, solution. On the back of that, there's some automated resegmentation based on any updates that have happened. Um, and one of those updates might be to identify, so Cube has identified that a certain customer or a number of customers are relevant for an agentless interaction. So then uh, QCR has driven those cases into the agentless um, portal. Uh, there's a communication, there's a, a level of interaction between uh, a bot and uh, a customer. The outcomes then feed back into uh, the accelerator, uh, which then become history and feed back into Cube. And then there's this cycle of continual sort of automation, optimization uh, through the client's business. And just to, I think, uh, forward, forward, you you brought up uh, the stats. So let's just um, have a look at what what we think is going to happen or what we understand from, from other uh, consultancies and partners that we use. So if we look at Cube specifically, uh, we expect some uh, increases in collected debt um, uh, just by implementing right time, right treatment uh, strategies uh, within Cube. Uh, equally, uh, just simple scoring. Uh, so you can risk assess your customers, either onboarding or through the life cycle that they're, they're in debt um, and can drive up again. We're, we're looking at 10% uplift in, in collections results. Uh, we've also got, uh, and actually this third uh, box, the 15%, applies both to Cube and uh, uh, the Accelerator QCR, um, where it's talking about automated strategies that are data-driven. Um, we should see an uplift in collection results uh, of 15%. And then the, the stat there on the right-hand side that Farid uh, mentioned, 75%, and it actually talks about uh, 54 to 75. And I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged that uh, people have told me that these are very lean, uh, conservative numbers that we've got on this this screen here, but obviously 75% from interactions um, on a on a digital engagement, which shows an uplift in collections, uh, is is quite is very significant. So just to just to bring it to life and uh, give you those uh, those stats, I think is very useful. 
Okay, I, I'd like to come back and talk a bit more about these, but uh, we do actually have an audience uh, question from the audience yep. member. So perhaps Nikos, you'd like to put some, which is um, this seems completely automated. What what role do you see um, a collector playing in this solution? Um, I, th I think I can take this one. So, um, firstly, um, human agents uh, focus on complex cases that require nuanced judgment. Um, like, uh, for example, uh, negotiating and uh, negotiation strategies or sensitive hardship situations where human empathy is essential. Now, secondly, um, the role is also to oversee and optimize uh, the AI virtual agent's performance. So their expertise helps refine the system's decision-making processes and ensures that um, our automated responses align with best practice. So we need human agents and, and uh, their expertise to m make the most out of uh, an automated solution. And finally, um, uh, they handle escalated cases where uh, AI automatically identifies that human intervention would be more effective. Um, uh, so it kind of empowers collectors to use their expertise where it matters the most. So rather than replacing collectors, we're enhancing their capabilities and allowing them to focus on uh, higher value activities that truly require human insight, in my opinion. Okay. And again, it's it's when I talk to clients, it, it is a concern, right? The the oh for all of us, right? I mean, AI is here, it's it's gonna get only gonna get better. Um, you know, we are seeing we we know of large language models, we're gonna be seeing more what we call large action models coming up where you know some of these activities are now being automated off the back of using the information so so there are genuine concerns i think you know all around you know where do we as mere humans you know live in this new world right um so it's interesting to see how, how you sort of respond to that tim just coming back to some of these these numbers um yeah. uh are these um uh individual or are they compounded so do i get 10 plus 10 plus 15 or do i is it just 10 percent across the board or 50 percent across the board how should i interpret uh, these numbers i would imagine they're uh, individual so across each of those elements um i, I would expect uh, improvements uh, within those ranges um rather than compounded okay uh, and in, in terms of feedback from clients do you, is are they telling you that these things are sort of achievable or um what are clients saying um in, in, in terms of where some of the opportunities for driving out these improvements are uh, yeah and I, I think they speak for themselves in terms of um uh you know dri driving cases towards um you know personalized personalized treatment for a customer um dr drives optimization as it is you're not sending out uh, expensive letters uh, and you know dialer campaigns. Uh, you're you're really targeting a customer based on their circumstances um, to uh, to to optimize your operations um, and and uh, make sure you're doing the most cost effective uh, action at the right time. Right. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, automation, obviously from an operational perspective. If you're very manual or you still you're still driving things manually um, to take those away uh, from from uh, a manual agent uh, or a human agent and automate it will then allow that agent to focus on I don't know, things like cust you know customer experience um, you know dr drive up how how you know, more focus on uh, more complex cases uh, a bit like what uh, Nikos was saying in terms yeah. of uh, agentless. You know, you're changing the focus um, and just focusing on the areas of complexity, whereas everything else is driven automatically or driven to a bot. You know, I think my experience with call centres is generally they're overrun. You know, they're they're, they're very busy. They're str you know struggling. Cases are being parked because they're too complex and too time time consuming to manage. So they're the ones that now human agents can focus on. And everything else falls into the automation piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certainly, when we we talk to clients, something you know, as well around sort of where are the opportunities for finding efficiency. It's usually usually about automating the low value stuff and yeah. passing the high value Correct. activity to to your most experienced resource, which is yeah. obviously your your people, really. In, in those, in those regards, Sorry. okay. 
So um, I asked a question at the very beginning of, of our audience, Tim, which is how important is cost efficiency in your business? Um, and the responses that we've had, 67% say it's, it's top priority and 33% say it's important but not critical. So if, so if I was one of those, those people who is really wanting to drive down costs in my business, okay, what would your advice be as to sort of what should I do next? How should I take this information you're providing me with and, and, and what should I do next? Uh, so the, the things I've sort of marked down are um, uh, use the data you've got um, to drive uh, effective decisioning through your solutions. Um, harness automation. Uh, so our products uh, are very much driven towards automating those processes that we can. But we, we also recognise that there are certain elements that need to be or are better to be to be done manually. So it's identifying those. Um, we said about smart decisioning. Uh, so obviously with consuming history data and, and knowing your customer better, um, we can then perform smart decisioning through the debt collections processes. Um, and, you know, the, the effectiveness of how we engage with our clients, understanding who they are, you know, how they're best going to respond to us, um, I think is critical nowadays. We all use our smartphones or are online for something. So letters, e emails, SMSs probably still have their place for certain demographics. We're not going to write those off, but actually there's more efficient ways of, of, of communicating with our, our clients. Uh, obviously, we understand that there's certain maybe regulatory notices or, you know, uh, legal type notices that need to be sent on paper um, that that still exists. Uh, but, um, you know, we need to pick and choose uh, where we're using our expensive methods of communicating um, and focusing on other methods uh, that can be more online, uh, more up to date, uh, and so on. Okay, great. So that brings us to the end of our uh, discussion this morning. Thank you very much, um, Tim Manikos, for your time. And thank you for, to our audience for um, sharing your or taking the time this morning to listen to us. I hope you found information really useful we will be sending out some information after the uh, after the webinar just um, to give you a bit more detail around some of the things that tim and nikos have been talking about um but and we'll also send out some uh, contact details as well so that if you'd like to find out more you can speak to tim nikos or, or other colleagues Absolutely. at Quarka who can who can give that information okay so thank you very much for your time and uh, we hope to see you again soon thank you thank you so much for having us thank you thank you